okay so we are now live i think am i audible uh, just check the link okay so we are also live now um so every if anyone has practicals for that day if you miss the evs lecture you can always look it up from our youtube channel okay and the name of our youtube channel is mes agc official okay uh it's in the chat box yes everyone so you subscribe to mes agc official this subscribe to this channel whenever you have the practicals if you are unable to attend the lecture it is going to be uploaded on the channel okay uh, soham does that answer your question yes ma'am thank you ma'am okay is everyone clear with this okay all right so i am just sharing the screen so the outline for this semester like i told you it's going to be environmental pollution different types causes solutions to different types of pollution then very important topic of climate change and lastly we'll also study a bit about human population and the environment okay so this is the outline of our uh, semester this year okay uh, this is how our uh, semester is designed our second semester and i believe the paper pattern and all that all that will be told to you in advance so you don't have to worry about it i'll just share the screen we'll start studying about environmental pollution so the cause of or the case of environmental pollution is such that there are uh, three to four types that we have to study in our uh, syllabus which are air water noise and soil right so these are the types that we have to uh, study so we will try to cover air today okay um i'm sharing the screen okay so along with uh the air pollution water soil and noise pollution we also have to look at nuclear pollution okay uh so nuclear pollution the health hazards cause of nuclear pollution and also the human health risk okay, so again very important and lastly waste so a lot of solid waste management how do we control urban and industrial waste okay so this is what we are going to be uh studying in this unit okay now for how do we define pollution very simple is that uh any chemical or biological entity that is going to harm the quality of the atmosphere the hydrosphere and the lithosphere is called as pollution okay very uh, very simple it is because we depend on atmosphere for air hydrosphere for water and lithosphere for soil so all of these are very important in supporting life and therefore if our essential natural resources are getting contaminated if their quality is degrading we know that that is an indication of pollution okay so thereby pollution can also be defined as the introduction 
of contaminants into the natural environment that cause an adverse effect okay uh, any natural entity if you remember in the last semester we looked at natural resources right air water soil so if they are getting contaminated in such a way that it is causing harm to their existence then it is called as pollution okay the case of pollution in our uh, case today till today's date it is so worse right uh, is that it is also accelerating climate change right so the third unit that we are going to study of climate change that is getting accelerated because of increase in pollution right so more and more pollution is causing more and more climate change okay if if we have to classify pollutants they are classified as three types okay yes do we have any volunteer yes maitre can someone read the screen so i know that you are paying attention yes ekta yes ma'am okay ekta can you tell read the three types of pollutants yeah ma'am uh, first degradable or non persistent pollutants these can be rapidly broken down by natural processes example domestic sewage discarded beds or vegetables etc second slowly degradable or persistent pollutants pollutants that remain in the environment for many years in an unchanged condition and take decades or longer to decay example ddt and most plastics third non degradable pollutants these cannot be degraded by natural processes once they are released into the environment they are difficult to eradicate and continue to accumulate example toxic elements like lead or mercury correct correct yes so uh, pollution is caused because of pollutants right now how do you classify these pollutants okay pollutants are basically classified as three types those three types are non persistent persistent and non degradable pollutants okay so you might as well get a question in the exam okay now it looks a bit simple here but students tend to get confused between non degradable and non persistent okay so make sure that you are paying attention non persistent pollutants are the degradable pollutants right so what happens they can be rapidly broken down so for example your wet waste or the discarded vegetable all of that is the degradable type of pollutant the degradable type of pollutant is not so dangerous for the ecosystems okay but look at the non degradable type the third type the non degradable type what happens here they are not degradable by natural processes and once they are released they are continuing to accumulate okay so once you put it in the environment it is going to stay there for a long time so what do you do with it it keeps on persisting it keeps on causing pollution it causes harm the mere existence of this compound is causing harm okay so therefore these non degradable pollutants they are extremely difficult to eradicate and therefore they are the most dangerous type now there are also some slowly degradable type that you can see here they remain in the environment but eventually they do degrade okay like for example ddt and most other types of plastics there is another way in which uh, pollutants can be also classified pollutants can also be classified as point source and non point source okay again any volunteer yes girish rahul
Okay, Maitri. Yes, ma'am. Uh, pollution is often classed as a point source, which means any discernible, confined, and discrete. Example: pipe, ditch, channel, tunnel, well, discrete container or vessel, or other floating craft. And non-point source: source that cannot be readily identified. Example: excess fertilizers, herbicides, and insecticides from agricultural lands and residential areas, oil, grease, and toxic chemicals from urban runoff and energy production, eroding lands, salt from irrigation practices, bacteria and nutrients from livestock and pet waste. Correct. so like i told you uh, so there was a question asked in the upsc exam uh, they had given one example and they had asked to uh, select the correct answer whether it was uh, any whether it was a point source or a non point source okay so like i told you in the previous <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so like i told you in the previous semester our syllabus you know it Overlaps with the UPSC syllabus also, and questions have been asked on this topic. Okay, so it can be also classified as a point source and non-point source. Point source. What does that mean? It means that it is confined. You can go and identify that source. Whereas in a non-point source, it cannot be readily identified. Okay, like for example, if there is uh, some erosion. or if there is salt from irrigation practices you cannot go and say okay from this farm this fertilizer runoff has come right or you cannot say from this factory or from this livestock or pet waste this waste is being added to the river therefore it is not discernible you cannot pinpoint and say okay you are responsible for this whereas in a point source you can very clearly say that yes this is the tunnel or this is the pipe from which the river is getting polluted so you are responsible you will get fined for it okay are you understanding the difference if i am able to pinpoint if i am able to say that if i am able to exactly say yes this is the source of the pollutant it is called as a point source if i am not able to say exactly where the pollution is happening from it is called as a non point source okay so up till now we have seen pollution or pollutants can be degradable slowly degradable or non degradable or we can also classify them as point source or non point source is that clear very simple this is for all the types of pollution so air water noise soil all of these have these two types okay now let's move on to the first type that we have in our syllabus is the air pollution so the air pollution the air pollution refers to any physical chemical or biological change in the air if there are any undesirable conditions that are taking place in the air quality we say that the air is becoming polluted it is the contamination of air by harmful gases dust smoke which affects plants animals and humans okay now air pollution uh, is has been taken place from a long long time okay the first case of air pollution was noticed during the industrial revolution okay uh, so industrial revolution or ir as we say um you know during the industrial revolution what happened the origin of uh, basically air pollution in modern times it can be said to happen in europe right so what happened in europe around the 19th century there was this uh moth right a moth is like a butterfly okay so what happened to this butterfly a black color uh, butterfly was detected now 
the normal color of this moth or this butterfly is actually uh, brown. Okay, it's actually brown in color. But what happened? It became camouflaged on the trees which are found in that industrial area. And it turned into black color. So this uh, moth which was found, it was it got easily spotted and it got picked up by birds. Whereas the black color form which camouflaged it survived the birds right so the brown color one was uh, successful in the was not successful it got detected there are these black color forms of moth they became successful in the industrial areas because the other birds the prey birds could not hunt them Okay, so what happened is that um, basically this is an this is a classical example in the case of pollution, which leads to adaptation. The original color of the butterfly was brown or it was spotted, but because of so much pollution in the air, it adapted, it turned its color into black. Okay, the other example of the London uh, of the air pollution is the London smog. Has anyone seen the TV series, The Crown? Do we have any students? Yes, ma'am. So in The Crown, you must have observed there was a case, so Winston Churchill, right? So Churchill was the prime minister of London and uh, there was, you know, like, like the current case of Corona. Uh, in 1952, what happened in London is there was heavy pollution over the over the city for at least five days. And there are actually 4,000 people who have died because of air pollution. And uh, if you have seen the serial, you will know that Winston Churchill, basically he did nothing. Uh, and uh, a lot of people died because of it, right? People in his own office also died because of it. So the case of the London smog, which uh, took place in 1952, it is again a very, very classic example of people who have actually died because of pollution. The other case of pollution, air pollution, uh, I'm writing it in the chat box, is the case of Delhi. So basically Delhi NCR actually. So in, in India, Delhi NCR, it always ranks first in terms of air pollution in, in India. There is heavy pollution in the air in that entire region. Okay, so next class, you find out the reason why Delhi is the most polluted city in India. Okay, everyone for homework. So we will discuss it in next class about the case the case study of uh, new delhi okay for homework you take this in india this is the case is that always Del delhi ncr ranks first okay but if we look at history we know that air pollution it begun it has begun to increase by the 20th century as there was development of cars there was you know petrol was found and diesel was found and their ford was already making cars and therefore we had to get there was a huge amount of carbon emissions which have already started so more the number of carbon emissions also more is going to be your pollution in air pollutants specifically if we have to classify air pollutants specifically we classify them as primary and secondary pollutants. Now, remember these previous slide. Uh, okay, this previous slide that we studied, this is uh, degradable, slowly degradable and non-degradable or 
point source and non point source so this both of this both of these are for all the types of pollution but primary and secondary specifically for only air pollutants okay it is not for the other it is not for water soil etc it is only for air pollution so air pollutants are classified as primary pollutants and secondary pollutants okay now primary pollutants are the ones that directly cause air pollution okay they are directly emitted from various sources and they are directly emitted into the atmosphere wherein they cause this pollution but the case of secondary pollutants is such that they are formed as a result of mixture of one or two primary pollutants okay so when one or two primary pollutants mix with each other they form a secondary pollutant for example you know smog smog means what smoke plus fog okay so basically smoke combines with water droplets and it forms smog and smog is called as a secondary pollutant because it is formed by the reaction of two or more primary pollutants so remember primary pollutants are single compounds whereas secondary pollutants are a mixture of primary pollutants so you have pan there is also smog there is also ozone so ozone is basically what o3 is what o2 plus o that is your o3 right so even ozone is a secondary pollutant so you might as well easily get a question in the exam about this primary air pollutants and secondary air pollutants so these are directly causing and these are a mixture or a reaction of two or more primary pollutants together is that is that clear this is primary pollutants and these are the secondary pollutants the examples are very clearly seen carbon dioxide nitrogen compounds sulfur compounds lead whereas secondary pollutants are pan smog and ozone okay very simple now uh, actually daily monitoring of air pollutants is done okay i will show you the website so that you can also check on your own um so there is a national air quality index uh you know the central pollution control board uh which is maintained by the ministry of environment forest and climate change right uh, i'll just share the screen again okay is it visible to everyone yes ma'am so basically this is a uh, uh, an air quality index it is maintained by the cpcb which is your central pollution control board and daily monitoring is done of the air quality okay so it's a very official data um so now the air quality in delhi is very bad you can see it's in the red so aqi means air quality index so what is it right now it's 3 307 it's very very bad and it's very recently taken can you see this date when is date 20th april at just 5 pm they have taken this data now let's select pune for example so basically you can uh, look for data of any of your cities so i mean right now we are on Kurve Road. Okay, or you can look at Koth Road. Okay, so look at it. In Pune right now, in this Koth Road area, it is one forty. 
So this is the color code. Can you all see the color code? I think in Delhi it was very poor, right? It was red. But in Pune now it is moderate. It is yellow. So not only for each city, in within each city also we have different regions. Like you know, you have there is also Arandi, right? So or RND also the statistics. Okay, so you can always check this website. You can go to the website and check the data. I think in the in Pune city again in the winters, I think around December. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you. They had put up these, you know, uh, big. They had put up a big cloth like filter uh, in the shape of a lung, in the shape of human lungs, right? Uh, to detect. Levels. So uh, I think by PC. So government or different NGO, you know, they keep on doing such activities to raise awareness for the cause of pollution, right? Um, so therefore, uh, it's very very important that we look at different control measures. Okay. Now uh, the case of air pollutants. Again. Is if you saw on the website right now, uh, we looked at the air quality, right? Uh, you must have seen also uh, how they are going to show you. They they showed you data for each of the other compounds also, uh, right? So if I have to 
show it to you again uh, you might re uh, realize it okay can you see i'm sharing the screen again so basically okay can you see the screen air quality is monitored in these specifically these five types of pollutants can you see here ozone is monitored carbon monoxide nitrogen compounds and there is something called as pm10 and pm2.5 so pm is particulate matter 10 and 2.5 okay so these are the pollutants which are used to monitor air pollution in general okay so let's look at what these pollutants are exactly so the first one is carbon monoxide carbon monoxide okay carbon monoxide is again a colorless odorless it's a very toxic gas uh, it is produced when organic materials like natural gas coal or wood are incompletely burnt uh, the major source of co is the vehicular exhaust right so the vehicles are the major source of carbon monoxide it can be absorbed by your blood hemoglobin and therefore the blood can no longer carry oxygen okay Basically, the human blood has a molecule which is called as hemoglobin, has the ability to attach to either carbon compound or oxygen. So, if it is being attached to carbon monoxide, then it <clears throat> then it means that it will not be able to absorb oxygen. So, air pollution in the form of carbon monoxide is affecting oxygen carrying capacity of your body okay so therefore carbon pollutants are very very dangerous but the good thing is that it is not a persistent pollutant okay and it can be converted to something else thereby it can be absorbed by even trees Okay, natural processes can convert it to other compounds that are not harmful. Okay, so it's not a persistent com uh, compound. You don't to worry about it. But ion of carbon monoxide must be reduced. Okay, the next other compounds are of course sulfur oxide, nitrogen oxide. They are also found in vehicular exhaust. Then there is also a uh, lead. Lead is a major pollutant that remains unmonitored. We always think of, you know, carbon dioxide, nitrogen compounds, sulfur compounds, uh, but sometimes lead becomes unmonitored. It is PB, but it is also emitted by vehicles. And largely in your big cities, in the metropolitan cities, lead is found in huge amounts. Okay, and leaded petrol is the primary source of lead emissions in our Indian cities. Okay, so it's actually a very dangerous thing. Then you must have seen uh, in the on the website there was PM10 and PM2.5. These are uh, tracked in your air, national air quality index. So PM10 means particulate matter, and here 10 means what? The diameter of the particle is 10 micrometers or less. And smaller than PM10 is PM2.5. PM2.5 means the particle, uh, the diameter of that particle is 2.5 micrometers or even less than that. So PM10 is a larger particle. PM2.5, it is a smaller particle. Okay, so these... Uh, particulate matter means what? They're actually 
solid material there are small chunks of solid material which are dispersed in the atmosphere so basically what are examples smoke so smoke particles from fire particles ash from industries all of this is particulate matter okay uh, so you know people use chulhas so chulhas are very dangerous because they release pm particles even in the north in north india you know people burn their farms uh, in punjab and haryana the farmers they burn their farms. it causes huge amount of pollution in delhi and ncr so that is a very very wrong practice it is directly releasing smoke into the atmosphere okay so that is contributing to pm particles so smoke particles then bits of asbestos asbestos is again basically a compounds from industries you know dust particles and ash from industries all of that comes under pm okay so repeated exposure to these particles can cause them to accumulate in the lungs and you know pm 2.5 it directly co uh, crosses the blood barrier so it can directly enter into your lungs is that is that clear so this is the case of the air pollutants we have primary pollutants and we have secondary pollutants i think we have seen uh, most of the pollutants in detail any questions up till here yes any questions okay right so let's uh, let's just take a 5 minute break and we will start with uh, we'll continue with the causes of air pollution okay yes ma'am i'll just share the link for the attendance so just fill your attendance for the first lecture i'll uh, paste the link in the chat box
Yes, I am sending the attendance link. So this is for the attend. Everyone, check the attendance link. Only two minutes, it will be active. So we'll take a five minute break, and then we will continue with the next. Continue with the next topic. Ma'am, Chalo, what my attendance, sir? Uh, okay, just let me check. Huh? <clears throat> okay, can you check now? Just yes, check now. It's open. I think it's working now. Okay, just two minutes quickly, everyone fill the attendance. Okay, link again. So everyone please save the link. It's going to be the same link every lecture. Everyone save the link.
<clears throat> the case of air pollution again is such that uh, we need to look at the causes of air pollution. Now, air pollution is majorly caused because of two reasons. So the first reason is a natural reason. And of course, we have the most pressing issue of today, which is the anthropogenic or the man-made reason. Okay, now look at the natural reasons. There are, of course, volcanic eruptions. There are forest fires. There can be biological decay, pollen grains. Pollen grains, again, you know, it's a very natural thing. Pollination is a natural phenomenon. Marshes and photochemical oxidation, right? So these are all the natural causes. Yes, air pollution does happen naturally. And it was not a problem until there were these exaggerated anthropogenic emissions. So there is vehicular emissions, thermal power plants, basically all the industries and even agriculture, right? So we tend to forget about the last reason, but agriculture is also a dominant source of air pollution. The case of fertilizers causes huge amount uh, release of these uh, particulate matter into the atmosphere. Okay. Now the case of these natural sources again uh, is that there can be dust from natural places. Sometimes methane is also emitted by animals, especially cattle. Within the Earth's crust also, you know, radon gas can be uh, emitted. Uh, radon is a noble gas. It's a colorless, odorless, and naturally occurring gas. And from the wildfires that we just saw, the forest fires, there's a huge amount of smoke and carbon monoxide. But these were all naturally taking place. The Earth could adapt to these. But as soon as there were exaggerated anthropogenic emissions, it has now become a problem, okay? So remember that air pollution used to take place naturally also, but the real problem started when there were exaggerated, increased amounts of anthropogenic emissions, okay? Now the effects of air pollution, again, I'm sure you all know, but don't forget to, think about the effects on animals and plants, basically materials and also the environment, okay? Now, uh, I'm sure everyone knows the effect of air pollution on humans. There are a few short-term effects and there are long-term effects. I think you can all see it here very clearly. The short-term and the long-term effects. Very important for us to note are the effects on even animal life. Remember to think of animals, plants, materials also, because we are talking of air pollution in the context of the environment, right? So we have to think of all the stakeholders in the environment. Even animals, when they inhale polluted gases, they also suffocate and die. If there is acid rain that falls in the oceans, it is going to kill the fish also. Okay, and ozone pollution is going to cause damage to all types of bird zones. Okay, toxic chemicals can force wildlife species to migrate to newer places, change their habitat. So the loss of habitat can also be, I mean, the one of the reasons that we saw in threats to biodiversity. One of those reasons can also be toxic chemicals or even air pollution. So in this image, there's a big industry here.
So the first thing that is a basis, so means yes, or maybe the leaves. They can be leaf margin discoloration, or it burns out. So here, can you see that it is becoming yes? So that is the cause of sulfur dioxide. There is also pepper spotting. Can you see? In the case of ozone injury, right? So, in the case of pepper leaves, can you see here? Uh, uh, so, in the case of leaves, it causes flecking or it causes black spots because of uh, exposure to ozone. This is a because of exposure to sulfur dioxide. So, even plants are getting affected because of increase in contamination of air. The rise of pollutants in the air is also causing these changes. Of course, on materials, you know that uh, metals, they become rusted. It causes corrosion. And on stone and marble, I think you've already heard of pitting of the Taj Mahal. And it also causes discoloration. Okay, so not just animals, plants, but also materials are getting affected because of air pollution. On the stratosphere, it causes a huge amount of ozone depletion. So uh, this topic we will uh, study in the upcoming lectures. We will study about the effects of ozone depletion in detail. Okay, so the impacts of air pollution are wide. Of course, it causes a huge health concern. There are about 7 million deaths annually taking place because of indoor and outdoor pollution. They are affecting climate change. They are accelerating global warming. It also affects rainfall pattern. Some places it is causing excessive rainfall. In the other places, it is causing droughts. Haze and dust from air pollution. It is reducing solar yields increasing electricity consumption and the last one is of course food because it reduces crop yield so we will discuss these issues again um, in detail in our upcoming lectures because we have to study climate change okay now there can be some innovative solutions to air pollution one such solution is that uh, one person, like I told you, Delhi has become like Delhi NCR is the is consistently becoming the most polluted place in our country. So there was a, a young entrepreneur from Delhi who is making ink out of uh, the carbon emissions. I'll just show it to you. <clears throat> So it's a very innovative solution because pollution is being changed into uh, ink. Right? And you can always use ink. You can sell it in the market. Uh, the air quality of Delhi is, again, very poor. I think we just saw it on the screen. And so, so this is one innovative solution to tackle that problem. Is the screen visible to everyone?
Right, so very clear example of um, youth-led action. Right, again, it's a it makes a lot of entrepreneurial sense. Of course, it does make a huge amount of environmental sense because we are directly taking the soot that is found in the exhaust and using it to make ink. Right, so uh, again, like I told you, so for your homework to uh, tell me next time, I mean, in our next lecture tomorrow uh, about why there is so much of pollution in Delhi and CR. <clears throat> so we'll work and we'll discuss it tomorrow. Uh, the I think uh, many parts of the video already showed a few, one or two reasons of it. Um, but again, like he mentioned, is that uh, we are running out of time, right? So every day, there are more and more pollutants which are being added to the atmosphere and therefore it's getting uh, more and more difficult to 
have clean access to clean air. Now this problem intensifies in the summer, uh, sorry, it intensifies in the winter season. And therefore we need to look at a few innovative control measures. Uh, let's quickly look at some industrial uh, control measures that can be done. Um, and then we will stop for the day. So everyone remember to do the homework, do read about why Delhi is becoming uh, the topmost city in India with the huge amount of air pollution. <clears throat> so industries have, you know, many, many ways of tackling air pollution. They have many, many control equipments. How do we control them? So what do industries do? They have something called as a wet scrubber or they have something called as a settling chamber. So basically in both of them, what happens because of gravitational activity, uh, the air, the pollutants get settled to the bottom. So dirty gas enters from here and clean air ex ex exits from here. The same is the case with the wet scrubber. Only thing here is that get into the gas flow into this chamber. That helps in settling of the pollutants. So the compounds they react with the fluid and it gets collected to the bottom. Okay, so the contaminated fluid exists and this causes cleaning of the gas. So either companies can use wet scrubbers or they can use dry methods. Okay, then which means they can use a wet scrubber or they can put up gravitational settling chambers. Or they can also do is they can use a cyclonic separator or an electronic precipitator. So here they were using gravity as a method to separate the pollutant. Here they are using uh, electronic uh, cathode and anode, right? So therefore, because of the difference in the charge of the particle, the residue gets, the pollutant gets separated. Is that, is that clear? So these are some common techniques uh, some common methods that are used for controlling pollution. Gravitational setting, uh, cyclone separators, fabric filters, electrostatic precipitators, and of course, I think I showed you wet scrubbers, this, right, so spray tars, venturi scrubbers. So this is just in detail what has been mentioned, but remember a few names at least to control air pollution, okay? Um, so this is a summary slide, causes, effects, and solutions, okay? For each of the pollution, I have given you uh, uh, this summary slide. We have seen control measures, we have seen causes, we have effects. So next class, we will look at solutions, right? What can be done on, on a challenges, right? Uh, so that can think about it. So everyone remember to check why Delhi NCR is the highest, has the highest amount of air pollution in India. And tomorrow we will discuss air pollution we discuss the solutions to air pollution. Uh, so think of what can be done on a individual level. Then on a local level, very important on a national level. And then we also have to discuss what can be done on an international level. So tomorrow we are going to discuss these five points. We are going to start with these five points and then we will move on to the water pollution. Is that clear? So I want your inputs on air pollution. I want solutions from you on an individual level, local level, national level, and of course on an international level. So this is how, this is how we are going to structure it. And we're going to look at solutions. So I want inputs from you. It is going to be a class discussion. Okay. So that's why I have told it to you today. So you can uh, read about it. <clears throat>